Once again to the Palmer Home for Children Radiothon on Super Talk Mississippi, the 11th consecutive year that uh, this event has happened. We are glad to be back with you. A couple of hours in the books. It's already been a great day. Over $20,000 donated by you from across the state of Mississippi to Palmer Home for Children. It is an honor to uh, visit now with Attorney General Lynn Fitch, who joins us on the phone this morning, uh, and she works in an office that uh, that works very closely with children's homes in Mississippi. She is familiar with Palmer Home for Children, familiar with foster care, both the good and the bad that goes along with that. Attorney General Fitch, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us this morning. Thank you. Good morning, Richard. And I really appreciate Super Talk you highlighting the Palmer Home. What a tremendous uh, facility filled with great, compassionate team members. They are taking tremendous care of these children, watching out after them. So uh, very grateful. And I'll say right off the bat, please give. Please give to the Palmer Home. Uh, they certainly do outstanding, incredible work taking care of our children and helping them be nurtured and grow and become young adults. If you would like to give, there are a number of ways you can do that. Online at supertalk.fm slash Palmer Home. You can give us a call at 662-469-5533. Or if it is more convenient for you, you can pull up that Venmo app that you probably have on your phone and uh, donate at Palmer Home dash for children. That's at Palmer Home dash for children. Attorney General Fitch, it's my understanding that not too terribly long ago you were here on campus at Palmer Home, had a chance to, to see the facilities, meet with the staff a little bit. What, what can you share with us about that experience? Oh, again, amazing. Again, all the, the individuals that work there that are true um, team leaders, they are giving love and compassion and warmth to these children. Just to see the facilities just to see the opportunities that these children have to, to live in those cottages with parents. Uh, it's just an incredible uh, atmosphere. Um, and so for anyone who's not been there, uh, again, look at it. Think about how you can help. Again, this is an opportunity where we should – we're also grateful for the Palmer Home and for everyone that collectively works there. They're giving this loving space to these children. They're helping them continue to grow, to heal, and to be become the next adult. It, it's just an amazing place. Um, so I have been, had the great fortune of being a part of working and supporting the Palmer Home since they were over in Columbus and then to see the right. new facilities, the new campus – uh, the Wellness Center, it's just uh, amazing, and I'm so grateful for the work. You know, Drake Bassett and I were talking uh, about an hour ago that, you know, I, I feel like for lots of people there are, are kind of preconceived notions of what a children's home might look like or, or what maybe in years past we would call an orphanage would look like. And whatever that image is in your mind, this is not that. When you pull through the gates at Palmer Home, it really is incredible to uh, to see the special place that the children who are served here uh, get to call their home on a daily basis. And, and they truly, it is a home for these children. Again, the warmth, the love, you can feel it, as you said, Richard, when you come through the gate. Um, you can just see it from the parents, all the people that uh, work with such a loving spirit uh, to these children, uh, the ones that are on campus, the ones that are coming in daily. It, it's just an, an atmosphere um, of, again, the kindness, the graciousness, the empowering of all these children that they provide at the Palmer Home. Visiting with Attorney General Lynn Fitch as we continue with the Palmer Home for Children Radiothon on Super Talk Mississippi. Um, because of your role, Attorney General Fitch, uh, you, you deal with foster care a lot. You, you see a big part of that. Uh, over 4,000 children in Mississippi currently reside in foster care. That's just in our state. And the, the sad fact is that there probably are far more than that who are in need of foster care. Tell us a little bit about the role uh, that you and your office plays in the foster care system in Mississippi. Well, and thank you for letting us kind of showcase that a little bit as well. It's staggering that we have over 4,000 children in Mississippi that are in foster care, and there's so many others that are in need. Um, certainly the Palmer Home has just played a tremendous role in that. But in our office, uh, we certainly are working with our um, 
partners in trying to fix this um, broken adoption system, this broken foster care system. That's a priority, certainly in our empowerment um, project that we're working on, because the reality is those children need to be in loving, caring families very quickly. Uh, it's important to their health and to their well-being. Uh, we were very fortunate. We worked with the legislature this year, and we pushed for the foster uh, parents, uh, their Bill of Rights and responsibilities. And it is such a great resource because these foster parents, they're heroes, Richard. They give of themselves. Yeah. They provide support, uh, loving homes. Uh, they're very active in the growth and development of, their ch of these children that they bring in. So we need to recognize the great work and the great strength that they provide to these children. And then uh, I guess another piece of that, and, and you know, w when you talk about foster care and you talk about children's homes, the, the, the sad reality is there's there's a dark side to this piece as well. So, uh, not always, but, but sometimes there are, are difficult circumstances that children are coming for from that necessitate the need for foster care or for uh, full-time campus care like happens here at Palmer Home for Children. W when we talk about protection for children, kind of, Tell us about the role that, that your office plays, the Attorney General's office is playing in that to try and protect our most vulnerable here in Mississippi. Well, certainly that is so um, key and critical for our office is to protect these children. They are in a vulnerable state. Many of them have been living in a dark situation. Uh, we need to help them pivot out into a healthy, loving environment. Uh, there are so many. We need everybody to help up and step us, step in to do that to provide, um, you know, a, a new journey for these children. Um, so we work all the time um, to empower and uplift these children. We work with CPS. Uh, certainly, that's important in our work with that agency. Work we work right now. We do um, terminations of parental rights if we simply cannot reunify those children with their biological parents. Um, again, that's important because, again, when you think about it, we have that many children right now that are in the, the care of the state, how do we help that pathway into permanency? Because, again, that's important to get these children through the foster care into a, um, an adopted situation where they are there with a loving, thriving family. We, we, again, had such a great success working with the legislature. I'm very grateful for all the steps that they took. But that's to, to streamline that process because, again, these children deserve to be very quickly in these homes with foster care parents and then with their long-term adopted parents. So it's just very paramount to us to make that the, the key interest to have that child at heart. Um, and so to that end, you know, it's important. It's hard to remove these children, but at the same time, we know that's the right thing to get them into that environment. We've done a lot of work, again, with our legislature. We're very, again, appreciative, We're working on the empowerment project. How do we help young mothers? How do we provide them resources for upskilling so that they, again, can provide for their children? And if, and if they can't, then know that we're ready to help, you know, through the foster care, through the adoptive uh, process. But I do want to talk just a moment, Richard, about some things that are important to these young mothers particularly. The legislature uh, allowed the new um, uh, its creation of a program called the MAMA program, which I think mm. is very fitting. It's the Mississippi Access to Maternal Assistance. Uh, first one in the nation, we're going to run it with our partners through the Attorney General's office. It's going to be a website and an app so that any young mother or mother-to-be can tap right in and find out what are the resources, both public, private, faith-based, that they might need, be it child care, be it education, resources, tools in that particular county. And so it's important for us to, to step in and, and really create a better environment, a healthier environment for the mother and for the child. So we're excited about working with that uh, with our partners uh, as we move forward to always protect and uplift our children and, and to help these mothers as well. Incredible work that uh, is going on. Kudos uh, not just to the legislature, but to uh, to your office for uh, for the role that you played in that. I, I know this isn't enough time for this question, so forgive me for, for giving you a, a short window, but tell me just a touch more about uh, the streamlining of the adoption process. There's so many uh, families out there that want to adopt, and, and maybe because of a financial situation or an international situation, they just can't do it, and yet we've got children here 
right here in Mississippi that need loving homes with parents that want to adopt? Well, you're exactly right. I mean, it's just a, it's a tough situation. We've got to get people engaged and give them the opportunities to very quickly be a, an adopted parent, to be a foster parent, but to really move into that long-term environment. Uh, we, yeah. again, very grateful working with the legislature, got enhanced tax credits for people that are adopting. We think that is a good um, incentive to help because, as you said, it can be very costly to adopt uh, these children. And so we feel like the tax credits are a, a huge start to helping that. We're going to be looking with our partners, with CPS, DHS, o- across the board on how can we really revamp our system to make it user-friendly, not costly, and again, with the ultimate goal being to place these children into very compassionate, loving, forever homes. Wonderful. Attorney General Lynn Fitch, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. And again, thank you, and please, please, Donate to the Palmer Home.